Good morning, Discovery Church. It is my pleasure to be here with you this morning. Can you believe it? Summer is just about near its end. And we have a new season that's about to come uh, up on us. This might come with a little hesitation for some of us, and for others, it might be quite exciting. You know, often with natural change of seasons, um, there's life change that comes along. There's uh, new schedules that may come up with the new school year approaching. Maybe you're starting a new job, or your house might be on the, on the market, or perhaps you're looking forward to a new move to a new city. Perhaps over the summer you've experienced a breakup or a bit of a rough patch with a friend, and those things will definitely change dynamics in your life. Changes lead us to decision-making. But how in the world do we know we're making the right decisions? There's so many options out there, aren't there? There's lots of opinions, too. How do we know which college to go to, which person to date or to marry? Should we get another car in our family? There's so many of us that have experienced the repercussions of hasty decision-making when we've made them, those decisions way too early. We know the sting that comes with making bad decisions. But if you are a Christ follower, there's great news. We have access to something so beautiful, so life-changing, and that is wisdom, divine wisdom. So you might say to me, well, what do you mean I have access to wisdom? Well, the Bible talks to us about God's desire to be in close relationship with his kids, with you and I, and since we are his sons and daughters, we don't just live life as though God is an estranged father. No, he's not distant. He doesn't watch from the heavens above as chaos breaks loose on earth, though sometimes it might feel that way. That's not the truth. He is actually so much closer than we may think and more than we may feel. He is interested in the big things that's going on in your life as well as the small details. He cares. He listens when we pray, and more than that, he responds. And while he may not knock at your door saying, "Uh, yeah, she's the one, go ahead and propose to her tonight, he will give you wisdom to know if she is truly in pursuit of becoming more like Jesus, and that's the kind of gal that he wants you to journey in life with. But why in the world do so many of us get tangled up with the wrong person? Why do we move cities for the extra money but then end up working in toxic environments? Why do so many of our decisions end up being duds? Well, our world is noisy. I don't have to talk to too many people before we understand that. Our world is noisy and we get distracted. How many notifications do we receive on our phones? Emails, text messages, those news updates, man, they're coming all the time. How busy are our schedules? Is there even one quiet moment in our day to hear from God? Who has your ear? Are the people that we're spending most time with followers of Jesus? In John 10, 10, it says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You see, God desires for each of us, for you to live a full, beautiful, and thriving life. But the enemy is just so happy when life gets noisy, gets busy, and we get distracted. Because when we get distracted, God's voice is muffled. It's not gone, it's just muffled, and wisdom is far. So today, I want to talk a little bit about God's leading as our source of wisdom. Now, if we are needing to make a decision and want to make the right one, I mean, we all want to make the right decision, don't we? Well, we're wanting to walk in wisdom, and there's a few things that we need to do and need to understand. One of the very first things that we need to do if we're wanting to acquire some wisdom in our life is we need to pray. And I mean, that might sound very simple as Christ followers, like it's a bit of a brain, like a no-brainer, isn't it? But sometimes we can lack discipline. Sometimes our schedules can get off, our routines can get out of whack, and sometimes we just lack intention in this area. But if we're truly wanting to discern the voice of God, and wanting to be wise in our lives, we need to position ourselves to do just that. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. 
Connecting with the heart of God and learning how to know what his will is for us begins with us spending time with him. But if we're coming to God with our own agendas, are we seeking him with all our hearts? Does God have my whole heart? Not just a little bit, not just certain parts of it. Does he have my whole heart? That's the question that we can be asking ourselves. That verse in Jeremiah, it says, you will seek me and find me. And that's a beautiful promise. It's like, yes, Lord, I will take that. I'm going to seek the Lord, and I know I'm going to find him. But he says something more. He says, when, when you seek me with all of your heart. And I wonder so many times if the result of me having made a bad decision or there being heartbreak out of a decision was because I wasn't fully willing to surrender to God's plan for me. You see, prayer connects us with God and his heavenly purposes. And so if there's one thing in the world that's going to change the noise level in our lives, it's going to be prayer. It's going to be connecting with the one who sees the big picture. Prayer changes our perspective. It lifts our eyes upward rather than keeping things fixated on all the stuff around us, all those concerns, all the things that cause anxiety, all of the unknowns. Colossians 3, 2 reminds us that we need to be setting our minds on things above, not on earthly things. Prayer also cuts through the noise. Now, again, I don't need to be in your life to know that life is fast, the world is fast, busyness is of great value to you and to all of us. It's, it's one of those things. We want to be productive and active, and the world will, um, will kind of elevate that over even rest, which is sad. Um, but when we pray, we slow down. When we pray, we need to pause. We quiet ourselves. When prayer becomes a daily routine, we are now allowing space for the Holy Spirit and for God's voice to overpower all the other voices that might be trying to get our attention. Now, there's space for us to be able to hear wisdom that God wishes to bring to us. So let's just think about your morning. Think about how you start. Do you jump up, hop in the shower, grab a bite to eat and out the door? I mean, is there even a moment to pause? Are we so programmed to get to work and get productive and do those, those things that we have on our to-do list that we haven't even taken time? Or maybe there's time where we see fit, where we can make time. Maybe it's along the ride in the car that we, we pause and we take a minute. Maybe that's what, instead of listening to the radio updates, maybe that's where we do it. Maybe we set our alarms for 20 minutes or five minutes even before we start our day. Uh, just to welcome God into what that day looks like. We don't know what we're going to face today. I don't know what challenges or decisions I'm going to need to make today. And Psalm 16, 11 says, You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with your joy and your presence, and eternal pleasure will be at your right hand. We don't know what circumstances we will face today, but we know that we can find joy in his presence. Not because the world is right, but because he's good. Prayer also positions us for ministry. And as we lift our eyes above to his perspective, we are partnering with his kingdom, with his plan for ourselves, but also those around us. Yeah, you might have something specific on your heart today that you're needing direction in, which is wonderful. Bring that to God. But in his sovereignty, he may have something else on the agenda for you. And yes, prayer does position us for ministry. So you don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to have scripture memorized or have any particular leadership. You just need to be willing to move when he leads you. Galatians 6, 2 tells us that we are to carry each other's burdens. And in this way, we're fulfilling the law of Christ. Have you ever been on the receiving end of the right words at the right time? church. That's just who we've been called to be. We are people who are to call people higher, to lift people up and carry people when there's just really hard seasons. We point people to Jesus by loving like Jesus. Can I challenge you today before you head to work this week, before you show up at church next Sunday, or head to your small group? Pray for the people in your life. Ask God to keep your heart open and receptive to receptive to hear how he would like to use you to encourage and lift somebody up. 
Your words may actually be the confirmation or reminder in something that they're praying about today. Don't miss out on being a part of God's bigger plan just because you're looking for direction of your own. So when we're accessing God's wisdom in our lives, we first need to pray. We need to come to God first. But then we also need to learn how to discern the difference between the voice of God and the voices of the world. The enemy wants God's voice to be equal to every other voice. He doesn't want it to just be, uh, he doesn't want it to be the only option. He wants it to be just, you know, an option out there. Satan will do his best to interject. He'll try to confuse. He'll give you reason to worry and to be discouraged. The great news is that we can, however, elevate the voice of the Holy Spirit and the power of the word in our lives. And one of the ways that we can do that is by digging into scripture. Scripture, God's word, is living, breathing word. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Anybody need their thoughts and attitudes suggested? Hey, I'm not the only one. I know that. Need some wisdom to respond to that friend that just ripped a strip off you on social last week? I mean, it is so tempting, especially when we've been wronged, to respond the way that we feel, hey? Like when our emotions really want to rage out there and just take the, take the step forward in responding, to react in anger or in disappointment. The temp- temptation is there every single time. We have the decision to make. We can either rush in with an, emotion, with an emotional response or we can respond with wisdom. We can rush with that emotion, emotional response and come up with the best comeback, you know, beef it up with the attitude, dish out some results, a little bit of sass. But even that's going to leave you empty. You're going to leave us empty because we're called to so much more. We are called to be church-like. We are called to respond, to make decisions, to treat people in the way that Jesus did. Satan tried tempting Jesus. And every single time Satan threw a little something at him, Jesus threw scripture back. Satan is the deceiver. And he will use even partial truths. But just like Jesus, when Satan um, was trying to throw lies at him, he rebuked him with the truth and he found those truths in God's word. The word of God was elevated in Jesus' life, and we need it elevated in ours. The word of God is truth, and it's referred to as a sword for a reason. Scripture is our weapon in the battle of lies against Satan and the lies that he wants us believing. Our weapon is truth. And so when the enemy tries to make you believe that you're not enough for the circumstances that you're finding yourself in right now, remind yourself of the truth that you are enough and you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. When that social media post makes you feel angry or a friend begins spreading lies about you, don't forget that your heavenly father, who your heavenly father has called you to be. Are you feeling lost or unsure about your next step? Don't let Satan defeat you. You might feel like you're lacking wisdom. Well, James 1 and 5 says that if any of you lacks wisdom, what should you do? We ask God who will give us generously to all without finding fault, and it'll be given to us. All we have to do is ask. God will deliver. If you're seeking divine direction in your life, needing to take a big decision, make a big decision, don't do it on your own. Dig Dig into scripture and discern truth for yourself. But the other thing we need to consider when we're looking to discern whether or not it's God's voices or the world's voices that we're hearing, we need to consider who we're surrounded with. Are you hanging out with God's people? Now, that doesn't mean that we don't minister to those who are far from God. We are the light of the world, after all, and is the heartbeat of this church, of Discovery Church, that we bring hope and love to to those who are far from God. We desire to be a community of people who are known by their love first and then welcome people into a space where they can seek truth and find purpose for themselves and where they can begin their own journey of becoming more like Jesus. 
But as those who are already committed to becoming like Jesus, we need each other. We need our brothers and sisters, especially when we're looking to acquire some wisdom because Proverbs 13, 20 says, when we walk with the wise, we will become wise. So who are you surrounded with? Do you have some God-fearing, Jesus-following people in your life? You know, those who go to God first rather than making hasty decisions. Those who seek counsel before responding to that nasty accusation. Hey, if you don't, that's okay. Start today. Seek out some of those people today. And if you don't have a home church, I would highly recommend this one. Discovery Church has some incredible people, incredible leaders, incredible people who aren't perfect, but we are in pursuit of who God says that we are. We're in pursuit of his heart. So if you haven't been in a discovery group before, or maybe you haven't even considered the freedom groups, which I highly recommend, we are going to be relaunching our groups in the fall, and we would love to be journeying with you. We love community and growing together as we become more like Jesus. It's in those spaces when we are surrounded by others who are going running after the things of God. That's where you're going to find encouragement. That's where you get to be in encouragement. That's where you're going to be reminded of scripture and prayed for and cared for. And you too will find yourself running after the things of God and you'll find some wisdom along the way. So as we're discerning the voices of, um, of God in our lives, we also need to be considering the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, as Jesus was preparing his disciples for him to leave and go back to heaven, he was talking to them about someone who was coming, the Holy Spirit. Some versions of the Bible talks, to him, talks about the Holy Spirit as an advocate. There's so many different words for him. He's known as the comforter, the helper, our guide. He counsels us and empowers us. Romans 5.5 5 says that God's love had been poured out into our hearts, the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. He's a gift. And that's how we need to approach him. He is a gift. He's our counselor. And so if we have this gift of the Holy Spirit, you might be thinking, well, what do I do with him? <laughs> what do I, how do I engage with the Holy Spirit? What's this all about? Honestly, the key with the Holy Spirit is listening. When we take time to pray, to consider the big decisions that might be before us through the lens of God, we open our hearts, we can humbly ask, Holy Spirit, help me see what you see. And he shows up in the most amazing ways. He helps us see from a different perspective. The Holy Spirit is our guide, and he will guide you to living that full, abundant life that God offers each of us how do we know the whole, that it's the Holy Spirit? Well, there's a few things that we need to know about him. There's a few things in his character that is important for us to comprehend if we want to discern whether or not it's the Holy Spirit that's leading us and towards wisdom in a particular situation or just overall in our lives. The Holy Spirit never contradicts God's word. He only confirms so if you are coming up against a, um, a challenge and you're needing to make a decision, you're like, ah, I'm not sure which way I should respond, test it against scripture. There are things in the word, in God's word, that God says that we are to, to do. And so there, that's where we ought to obey. But then there's things in, our, in God's word where it says that we shouldn't do. If you are feeling a certain way in a decision and got, you feel like, okay, I'm being led maybe in this decision, is that the right decision? If it goes against scripture, then it's probably not. But if it's confirmed in God's character, in words that he speaks in his word, then perhaps the Holy Spirit is confirming that in you. He also convicts and corrects. John 16, 8 says, when he comes, he convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. The Holy Spirit is there to reveal to us the areas where we're going off track, the areas where there might be sin in our hearts, that when we're, our motives are not in check or not in line with what God would have for us. Romans 8, 16, 17 says, for the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into your innermost being. The Holy Spirit will reveal to us what's going on deep in our hearts. You know, those motives, the hidden agendas, 
And perhaps there's a hurt or a wound that we keep revisiting. Maybe that's the lens that we see through, uh, see our relationships through. Maybe that's why we keep cycling in bad decision making. There are some things in our hearts that maybe we've stuffed down so deep so we can avoid it. We think that we have, we, you know, we're protecting ourselves. But God wants so much more for, that, for us than that, than just to hide it all up. He wants to bring those things in the darkness out into the light so that we can walk in freedom and have hope. The Holy Spirit will, wa- will whisper to us about the parts of our hearts that need more. And you might be after wisdom in the decision that you're needing to make, but God is after your whole heart. He guides us to to the truth as well. In John 16, 13, it says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak whatever he hears, and he will also declare to you what is to come. The word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119 says, his word illuminates our path, it doesn't, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to give us an audible or a written step-by-step instruction, though I would certainly love that sometimes. But in his word, wherever there isn't a clear moral scriptural direction, what does God do? He gives us the wisdom to decide. He illuminates the path like a light to see to see how one path may lead us to destruction and others may lead us to disappointment, to see and remember the mistakes that we've made or from the wisdom of others and their mistakes that they've made, which path we need to avoid. He illuminates our path. He illuminates possible hazards and cautions. Now, God could have programmed us all so we would know exactly which path to choose and which decisions to make, but that wouldn't have given us the freedom to love him back. He loved us enough to give us the freedom to make those choices. But what if I mess up? (laughs) Well, yes, that is definitely something that we need to consider, and there's that hesitation in our hearts sometimes. Can you remember when you learned to ride a bike? You know, you popped on your helmet, and you sat on the bike seat, hands on the handlebars, feet on the ground. You're like so ready to ride that bike, but also so terrified to actually move forward and let go and trust that you know the process. Well, I can remember when we were teaching Sophia and Hudson. Well, I should, Lauren was teaching. I was more watching on this side. Can't take all the credit. It was a wobbly start. And I'm sure if you can remember your days of learning how to ride a bike, it's a wobbly start. You know, you move a few feet forward, and then you fall over. And then you move a few feet forward, or you're pedaling, and then all of a sudden you're like, I have to turn now, shoot. So, like, you're having to turn, and you fall down, getting your balance, all of those things. Eventually, it comes naturally, doesn't it? Eventually, we learn to ride the bike. (laughs) But it takes some time. But what is every parent's? part in the bike riding. It's not physically turning. It's not physically getting on the bike. It's not putting on the helmet. Kids have to do that themselves. Parents are there guiding, riding alongside, cheering them on. You've got this. Look, you're riding. Oh my goodness. Oh, buddy. Oh, it's okay. Hop back up. You can do it. You got this. What if I mess up? You're gonna mess up. (laughs) But the beauty in the whole process is that God will guide you back. We won't do things perfectly. We're not going to do it all perfectly. But God watches over us. His Holy Spirit guides us. He'll keep us on track, leading us back to the path again, helping us get back up, encouraging us each time as we're seeking him diligently for that next step. He gives us more wisdom, and then we get back up, and there's more trusting. He gives us more wisdom, and then there's more trusting. Shauna Lee, well, how do I know what this uh, God's perfect will might be? The Bible talks about, you know, knowing his perfect will for my life. Well, you can serve him as best as you possibly can in this moment, this very moment. Continue seeking him in the moments that are presented in front of you every single day. God, help me be who you want me to be today. Give me the wisdom and the ability to do things the right way. Give me wisdom to respond the way that you would have me respond. Help me date the way that you want me to date. Help me to decide which 
colleges would bring you glory, would give me that position to give you glory. Help me to parent in a way that raises my kids to trust you. I don't know what's pressing on your heart this morning, what big decision or challenging situations you find yourself in, but I do know this, and God wants in. He wants to guide you if you'll allow him. He desires to give you wisdom, to give you help in quieting all that noise, those voices around you. He wants to help you hear his voice and his alone. He wants to surround you with the right people, the people who will push you in the right direction. He wants to be able to help you discern his voice from others with the help of the Holy Spirit. And all we need to do is ask. Would you pray with me? Father God, would you help us be all that you've called us to be? Would you help me to do it your way? Thank you, Jesus, that you are the good shepherd, that you are the ones that are, you're the one who's leading us and leading us well. And today, I follow you step by step, moment by moment. Would you give us direction? There are so many decisions to make. There are so many opinions. And there's so many uh, options out there in the world. But God, would you make your word clear to us to, so that as we are walking step by step in you that you would empower us to make the right decision empower me empower us by your spirit as we entrust our lives to you and step out in faith now this morning you might be tuning in and thinking that i could use some of this wish wisdom i can use direction in my life right now and uh right now i'd like to give you the opportunity to welcome god into your heart today because none of us none of us whether we've been a christian since we were born growing up in church or if we are just making the decision today none of us can live life without him we have all sinned and fallen short. We are all in need of forgiveness. We're all in need of a savior. We're all in need of wisdom. And the wisest thing that you can do today is to say yes to Jesus. Because step by step of faith, it opens the doors to a life of grace and freedom. And that's all that we need. So today, if that's you and you want to say yes to Jesus, yes to that wisdom, that life, that abundant life that God offers, I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for, for me on a cross. Please forgive me of all my sins. Make me brand new and fill me with your spirit so I can know your voice, so I can follow your voice. My life is not my own, and I give it to you. God, would you help me? Would you direct me? Thank you for this new life. Amen.